What's up, y'all? Prof. David Taylor here. So glad to be back with you live. Uh, because, you know, uh, things have been uh, rough during the summer, just been, been dealing with some attacks from the enemy and a whole bunch of different things. So uh, I am glad to be back with you live. Glad to be back doing a live broadcast. I'm trying to bring my periscope up. My periscope's on, but as always, my camera isn't flipped. So right now, it's looking at my kitchen table. <laughs> So hold on, Periscope audience. We're trying to get my phone flipped so that uh, you can see me. Uh, but anyway, uh, welcome to my Facebook Live audience. Uh, so glad again to be back with you. There I am on Facebook, Periscope folks. And there we go. <laughs> hello, Periscope audience. And hello again to my Facebook audience. So let's jump right in. <clears throat> you know my tagline. My tagline is that God... I already told you what was going to happen if you had just listened to the prophets. Let me say that one more time. God already told you what was going to happen if you had just listened to the prophets. Okay? So when you're watching this video, please like and share. That helps get the word out because uh, I want to share the prophetic word with the body of Christ. Whatever the Lord gives me to release, that's what I want to be sure that I release. And we need as many people, as many uh, believers and unbelievers as possible to hear that. Because we want the saints to be edified, we want God to be glorified, and um, <clears throat> we want unbelievers to be challenged, to turn from what they believe to the Lord our God, okay? Uh, if you want to support me, you can go on my paypal.me link, that link address is in my Periscope profile, it's also in uh, part of every Facebook video I do has that PayPal link, and you can also support me through Amazon Smile. Amazon Smile is where you pick a charity of your choice and then a portion of whatever you buy goes to that charity. So my charity is Prophet David Taylor NFP, so you can support me through Amazon Smile. Uh, I'm setting up my music. Uh, I'm going to start featuring my music on this channel so you can hear my music ministry as well. I know I've been talking about that for a long time, but it's coming. Uh, believe me when it's coming. Okay, best way to find me online is I hashtag everything I do with PDT, hashtag PDT. So just look up hashtag PDT and you can find all my stuff. Uh, find me on YouTube with that same hashtag, hashtag PDT. Always fastest way to find me. Uh, now I'm back on live again. So my regular broadcast is Sunday, Sunday afternoon to 2.30 p.m. Central Standard Time, which is now. And then on second Thursdays, I know I have some catch-ups to do, uh, but I've got to do my No More Genies. That's on second Thursdays, uh, 7 o'clock. That's a teaching on what I call Genie Concept. Because too many people have a genie concept of God, and genie concept will seriously mess you up. Genie concept, seeing God as a genie is the wrong frame. And it will seriously mess your life up. And so I do a specific teaching on that, that second Thursday nights, uh, right here on Facebook Live and Periscope. And now, I'm also uploading my broadcast to YouTube. So whatever my new broadcast is. So I'm trying to catch up. I started with 2018. So I'm trying to catch up and get all my stuff from 2018 on YouTube, and I'm trying to get this latest stuff on YouTube, so that's what's going on there. All right? So as you know, I say it every week, I pray and ask the Lord before I come out here, what is it that he wants me to share with the body of Christ? Because if the Holy Ghost ain't saying nothing, then I'm not saying nothing. Okay? Because it's not about me, it's about what the Lord has to say, about what thus saith the Lord to his people. So let's have a quick word of prayer and we'll jump right in. So thank you, Lord, for this day. Thank you for this broadcast. Oh, God, thank you for the power of God, Lord, as my pastor preached so powerfully this morning. Oh, God, our words are not supposed to be in the, the wisdom and the spirit of men and the words and powers of men and whatever we think is important, but a demonstration of the power of God. So I ask you, Lord, to let your power flow through me and flow through this broadcast, oh, God, and we're going to cast our demons, we're going to do impartations, we're going to speak pro prophetic words, we're going to release healing anointings, we're going to do things that only the Holy Ghost can do, that you might be glorified and that the saints might be edified and that people might know that you're real and that it's your power that manifests and does all these things and not the wisdom of man. And so we thank you for it, we believe you for it, in Jesus' name, amen and amen. All right, so uh, as always, I asked the Lord before I came out, what is it? that he wants me to share with the body of Christ, okay? And the prophetic word for today is new thing, okay? The prophetic word for today is new thing, new thing, 
Okay? So, what does that mean? Well, let's look at our foundational scripture. Our foundational scripture is Isaiah 43, chapter 19. Isaiah, uh, in the Old Testament, chapter 43, verse 19. Isaiah is what is known as a major prophet. Now, understand the difference between a major prophet and a minor prophet. A minor prophet does not mean their message was less important. A minor prophet means that their books were smaller. <laughs> That's all it means. So when you're reading the Old Testament and you see a division that says major prophets and minor prophets, the major prophets had extensive works. Isaiah, Jeremiah, very, very long books. Okay? That's what it means to be a major prophet. To be a minor prophet, Habakkuk, uh, um, uh, Obadiah, Zephaniah, Zechariah, those books are like maybe two or three or four chapters long, Malachi. It does not mean their message was less important, okay? It just means that their books were smaller. That's all that means. So Isaiah is a major prophet of the Old Testament because Isaiah had a lot to say, okay? So we're reading Isaiah chapter 43, verse 19, and it reads like this. I'm reading, I'm going to read several versions. We're going to start with the King James Bible. Behold, this is God talking, Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall ye not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Okay? Let's look at the New American Standard. Behold, I will do something new. Now it will spring forth. Will you not be aware of it? I will even make a roadway in the wilderness, rivers in the desert. Uh, NLV. For I am about to do something new. See, I have already begun. Do you not see it? I will make a pathway through the wilderness. I will create rivers in the dry wasteland. Mm. New International Version, NIV. See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. And finally, the Berean Study Bible. Behold, I am about to do something new. Even now it is coming. Do you not see it? Indeed, I will make a way in the wilderness and streams in the desert. That's huge. Okay? So what is God saying to us now? That's the scripture reference, but what is the Spirit of God saying to us now? Okay. The first thing you have to look out, because you have to read the Word of God delicately. Okay? You have to read the Word of God with attention to detail. You can't gloss over scripture. <coughs> Excuse me. So the first word in that verse is behold. <clears throat> whenever the Bible says behold, excuse me, whenever the Bible says that whole behold, that means look. Okay? Why would God have to tell you to look? That means if you're not looking for it, you might miss it. Many times people don't understand that when God does things in your life, they don't always look like you thought they were going to look. And they don't always come the way you thought they were going to come. Okay? How do we know that's true? The biggest demonstration of that truth is the Messiah, Jesus the Christ. He did not come the way they thought he was going to come. They thought Messiah was going to come in the Davidic tradition, in the tradition of King David, meaning they thought he was going to ride in town on a white horse with his sword drawn and start killing the Romans, overthrow the Roman government, and reestablish Israel as the dominant political power on the land. That's what they expected. That's not how Jesus came. Jesus came preaching, teaching, baptizing, casting out demons, talking to lepers, talking to people caught in adultery, talking to multiple divorced folk, okay, talking to all kinds of people, turning water into wine, uh, and then the people he picked to follow him were a mixed group of people. Uh, Matthew was a tax collector. Most of them were blue-collar workers, fishermen. Some of them were social revolutionaries. They never thought the savior of the world. They never thought the king of the Jews was going to come like that. They never imagined that Messiah would be like Jesus was. So when the Bible, when God tells you to behold, that means when God says, I'm about to do something, that means you've got to be paying attention. That means you've got to, God is saying, be alert, alert, wake up. Because it might not look like what you think. Okay? Uh, let me give you another one of my favorite examples. Many times we pray and we ask God for money. What you're really asking God for is manna. 
You mean you want God to drop you down something out the sky. Many times, you know what God gives you? God gives you ideas. And many of you looking at me right now, you've been sitting on multi-million dollar ideas for years. You've been praying to God about money, and God has given you ideas that are worth millions. But because you don't think that way, you see what I mean? So you got to be whole, okay? You got to be whole because it might not come the way you think it comes. It might not look because Messiah didn't look like they thought he was going to look. So that's why God says, behold, look, pay attention. I am about to do something new. I am about to do something new. I am doing a new thing. What does that mean? It means exactly what it says. But one of the things you have to do to prepare for God's new things, there's a scripture that says you can't put new wine in old wineskins. You know what that means? It means many times you have to throw out the old. So when God is getting ready to do a new thing or when God is in the midst of doing a new thing in your life, that means that anything that's old that would be hindering you from embracing that new thing, you actually have to let it go. Sometimes that means relationships. Sometimes it means you've walked as far with people as you can go and you can't really go any further with them in your life. You got to let them go. Sometimes, most of the time, it means thought patterns. It means whatever you're used to thinking, you can't think that way anymore. Sometimes it means physically relocating. That's what God told Abraham, that you have to get up away from your kinfolk and go to a land that I will show you. Sometimes it means physical relocation. Sometimes it means changing your job. But whatever it is in your life that's old, uh, Paul said, if any man be in a Christ, he's a new creature, old things are passed away, behold, all things are become new. Paul also said, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth to those things which are before, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. So in other words, what Paul was saying was he let that old life go. Okay? Sometimes in your head, you're still playing videotapes from who you used to be. You got to let that go. Okay? Because when you came in Christ, you were born again. You became something that the world has never seen. So you've got to let that old person go. And I've discovered that's what hinders a lot of people from moving forward. Because you're so busy, still hung up on, or you're listening to people that, that knew you when. That keep telling you, you used to be, you used to do this. Okay? But imagine if you're Apostle Peter. If you're Apostle Peter, used to party, used to drink. Peter still cussed after he got saved. Peter was known for cussing after he got saved. Peter was also a fighter. Peter walked with Jesus. Peter looked the Lord eye to eye. Peter looked in the face of Jesus. And when you looked at the face of Jesus, you were looking at the eyes that made the world. And Peter still had to grow. Peter still had to overcome some things. Peter still had to learn how to let go of his old way of life. And he walked with Christ. He was one of the twelve. Okay, and I've discovered that a whole lot of people are not living up to their potential because you're you're God is trying to pour something new inside of you. And you're so busy holding on to the old that you can't receive the new. And that's a hindrance. That's also very dangerous because that might mean that two years from now you in the same place. That's not the will of God. It's not the will of God for you to be stuck in the same place years Upon years upon years. And you know people like that. You know why they're still there? Because they still talk. Listen to the way they talk. They're still talking about the old stuff. Okay? I'm talking about the new stuff in my life. I got so much stuff I'm working on now. I got so many things that are going, going to jump off and break out in 2019. Uh, I'm going to be on TV on Wednesday. They're interviewing me uh, about one of my books, Diary of a Smart Black Kid. So God is doing new stuff in my life. So I'm talking about the new stuff. I ain't tripping on what was. Because I have embraced this principle and I have ingested it. And every day I'm breathing in, I'm breathing out the old and breathing in the new. Because I don't want to miss what God is doing. And like I tell you every week, everything that I'm saying to you, I'm doing it. Okay? So I'm letting go of the old and I'm focusing on the new because I don't want to miss. Because whatever God does, it might not be loud. It might be so quiet and if you're not paying attention, you might miss it. Whatever God does, it might not come in the package you think it's going to come in. It might be somebody you've known for a long time. It might be somebody you just met. It might be somebody from another country. 
You never know, okay? But if you are walking around with your head down, beating yourself up about who you used to be, you're going to miss. Because your blessing going to walk right past you. Because you're so busy walking around like this. Instead of holding your head up and living in the new day, living in God's forgiveness, okay? So God says, behold, I'm about to do something new. And then he says, in the Brian Study Bible, it says, even now it is coming. New Living Translation says, see, I have already begun. Oh, Lord, you know what that means? That means you might be in the midst of God's new thing. Okay, you might be in the middle of it right now. Okay, so it says, uh, uh, do something new. Even now it's coming. Do you not see it? Stop. Do you not see it? Do you not perceive it? When you get behind the language there on that word, do you not see it? The word there that they translate see actually means to know. So in English, they're saying, don't you perceive it? Do you see it? But in Hebrew, God is saying, don't you know it? You know what that means? That means that the Spirit of God is going to give you a witness so you can know. Because whenever God is doing something in your life, the Holy Ghost gives you a witness. My pastor preached powerfully this morning about the power of God, that the power of God is your witness. You don't have to come with fancy words and powerful speeches. You let the Holy Ghost do the talking. Cast out some demons, raise some dead people, heal some sickness, give a word of knowledge, something you couldn't know but by the Holy Ghost. Give a prophetic vision, okay? The Holy Ghost will speak, okay? But it says here, do you not know it? So what that means is that the Spirit of God is going to witness inside of you when the new thing, when you're in the midst of the new thing, that's why you have to be paying attention because the witness might not be loud. Sometimes if the Holy Ghost come on you strong, that's great. Sometimes the Holy Ghost don't, don't release the anointing strong. Sometimes it's just like this really gentle touch. It's this sweet, gentle, quiet thing. It's the most amazing thing because the Spirit of God is the power that made the world. When Father says something, it comes out of Jesus' mouth, and Jesus says it and becomes it because he's a living word, and then the Spirit of God moves and makes it happen. So the Holy Ghost, the third person of the Trinity, is the power that makes everything. But sometimes he's not loud. So it says you got to see it, you got to perceive it, but you got to know it. So he's going to give you a witness, okay? Because many times people want to know, if I have two or three job opportunities, which one should I take? The Holy Ghost will give you a witness. Take this one. You'll have a knowing on the inside. You'll have a sense of peace on the inside. The other ones won't feel right. But when you get the right fit, you say, okay, that's it. You see that? So that's why you got to have your spiritual antenna up, okay? But then it says, God says, indeed, I will make a way in the wilderness. Some translations say, I am making a way in the wilderness. Some say, I will make a pathway through the wilderness. What does the wilderness represent in Scripture? It represents a dry, barren, Erica say I'm preaching, <laughs> it represents a dry, barren place. You know what that means? The wilderness is always a place of testing, temptation, and no resources. One more time, <laughs> the wilderness is always a place of testing, temptation, and no resources. Let me explain it. Testing is not the same as temptation. Uh, temptation is a subset of testing. Testing, when God tests you, he tests you the way uh, a metallurgist makes a metal sword. When you're working with metal, you have to melt that metal down so you can pour it into a casting to make a sword. So when you melt the metal, there's some parts of the metals uh, that is, are the impurities of the metal, and that's called dross. And every metal, when you bring it out of the ground, when it's in ore form, has impurities. So when you melt the metal, what happens is that the dross comes to the top. And so the metallurgist, the sword maker, skims off the impurities. And then he's left with the pure gold and the pure silver to build a sword. That is how God tests us. When God turns up the heat or God allows the heat or God allows you to go into a wilderness, he's doing that so the impurities in your life will bubble up to the surface. And so the Lord can skim that off. So if you've got bad habits, if you've got bad language, if you've got bad thoughts, when you go in the wilderness, that stuff coming up, okay? God does that on purpose, not to destroy you. That's the devil. The devil's trying to destroy you. God is trying to make the impurities rise to the surface so he can skim the impurities off so there'll be pure gold underneath. And you come out the better for it. That's testing. Temptation is from the devil, okay? The Bible says in James, 
<clears throat> Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. For every man is tempted when he is drawn away and enticed by his own lust. Temptation is always the devil. Temptation is never God. God is never trying to draw you off into the flesh to get you to cheat on your wife or cheat on your husband or cheat on your taxes or tell lies or hook up with somebody you shouldn't be hooking up with or you name it or hate somebody you shouldn't hate or whatever it is that you feel in your flesh led to do. That ain't the Lord. Because God don't never tempt you. That's always the devil and your own lust. That's something in your flesh you need to crucify because it's telling you to go over there and eat the forbidden fruit. Because that's what devil, the devil is always trying to get us to do. And if we eat the forbidden, forbidden fruit, it produces death in our life, just like with Adam and Eve. That's always the devil. You don't have, if you're married and you meet somebody and they turn you on, that's your lust. That's the devil. That ain't from God. Talking about, oh, I know the Lord just wants us to be together. No, no, that's your lust talking. That's the devil talking. That's not God. You stood up there and you took vows with somebody else. You need to go home and be with your wife. Go home and be with your husband. Okay? That is not God trying to pull you into no new relationship just because you met somebody new and you turned on. That's your lust. That's not God. Cheating on your taxes, cheating on tests in school, Cheating your boss uh, when you're supposed to work eight hours a day and you come to work late and you leave early. <laughs> and you take two-hour lunches. I'm sorry, you cheat. You ain't. <laughs> They're not paying you for five and a half hours. <laughs> they paying you for eight hours. You're cheating. You ain't supposed to do that. That's not God. That ain't never God. And I'm going to say this. I'm going to take a little mo moment to brag. All of my close friends are some hard-working people. All the people that I have around me, they're some hard-working folk. I, I ain't surrounded by no lazy folk. That's why I love my friends, because my friends are not lazy. Not near one of them. Okay? So you got to surround yourself around what you want to be like. And when you have people that are constantly in your ear talking about how, how hard they're working, you're going to bring your game up. Okay? So testing comes from God to bring the impurities off your life. Temptation is always the devil in your flesh to try to get you to choose death. And then the third one is barrenness or lack of resources. That's the trademark of the wilderness, man. When you don't have enough money, when you don't feel loved, when you don't have a vision, you can't see your way out, that's wilderness. That's the sign of the wilderness. So if you have experienced something like that, God says, I'm going to make a pathway through the wilderness. In other words, God is saying, I'm going to give you the vision you need to get out of where you're at. Okay? It says that, I'm making a way. I'll make a pathway. Indeed, I will make a way in the wilderness. I will make a way in the wilderness. New American Standard says, I will even make a roadway in the wilderness. So in other words, God said, I'm going to help you find a road to get out of the barren place because we can't live in the barren place. The wilderness is something we have to pass through. We can't live with our resources. We need love. We need food. We need money. We need shelter. We need social interactions. You need to feel connected. That's the difference between people that go to church and people that don't go to church. When you feel like you are a part of a body of believers, it changes your whole mindset. I don't care what anybody says. When you feel like I belong somewhere, I'm telling you, when you feel like I belong somewhere, that there's a group of saints somewhere that know my name, that I'm involved, they know me, I'm a part of a church, it changes your whole demeanor. It changes your whole attitude as opposed to when you feel like I'm just out there. Out there by myself and don't nobody care about me. Don't nobody know me. Don't nobody know my life. Don't nobody know what's going on. That's wilderness, man. That's rough. That's why the devil loves to get us in the wilderness and then attack us. Because we make so many bad decisions when we feel alone. Don't we? Don't we make our poorest decisions when we feel alone, when we feel sad, when we feel depressed, when we feel like don't nobody care? That's all the mark of the wilderness. So God is saying, I'm going to make you a roadway out of that. <laughs> because you're not at your best when you're in the wilderness. When you don't have no money, when you don't feel loved, when you wonder about your meals, when you wonder, am I going to eat today? <laughs> And, and, and is a brother going to get a sandwich today? You can't be at your best living like that. 
Okay? God said, I'm going to show you how to get out of that. Okay? Then he says, he's going to make rivers in the desert. I will create rivers in the dry wasteland. You know what that means? That means that while even if you are still in a wilderness situation, God said, I'm going to send some water through there. But he don't say, uh, he doesn't say a stream or a trickle. He said a river. You know what that means? Have you ever seen a running river? That means God's about to send a whole bunch of stuff streaming through your life, even if you're still in a wilderness situation. Okay, so that's why the verse starts off with behold, because if God is going to do all that, you got to be ready for it. Okay, you got to be ready for God to do all that. Okay, if all that's coming and God says, behold, I'm already doing it, then you got to be paying attention because as it's flowing by, you want to be sure you jump in that water. What does that look like on a practical sense? Because I always give practical examples. What does that look like on a practical sense? It means that there might be somebody that maybe you just met that that relationship is going to open up so many more things for you. Get to know them. Send them an email, send them a text, friend them on Facebook. Just say, hi, how you doing? Just say, God bless you. Just say, I was just thinking about you. I'm just wishing God's blessings on you today. That's all you have to say. That might open up a whole dialogue just, just by showing some kindness, okay? Get to know the people on your job. Maybe you might need to go to some new places, like places you've never been before, like events you've never been to, and meet a whole new circle of people, okay? There's no telling. I was in the library the other day, and I had my smart black kid book with me. Let me show you, because I keep talking about it. Let me show you that book. La, 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 this coloring book. This is what I'm talking about. Diary of a Smart Black Kid, okay? That's my book. This is the book I'm going to be on TV for on Wednesday because they're interviewing me, okay? I was in the library the other day, and I had that book with me, and I saw a black woman there with a couple of uh, small sons, and I walked up to her, and I said, Hi, my name is David Taylor. I'm a local uh, author, and uh, I have a book out for, uh, you know, it's for everybody, but the hero, the protagonist, is an adolescent black boy, and in my research, uh, I found out there are no books on the market for adolescent black boys. And she said, wow. She said, thank you for introducing yourself. I gave her a business card. She said, is your stuff on Amazon? I said, I said, yes, it is. And then she said this to me. As I was leaving, she said, God's blessings on what you're doing. She said, I really like what you're doing. I hope that you keep doing what you're doing because what you're doing is a good thing. That blessed my very heart. You see what I mean? Because I came out of myself. I just walked up to a stranger and introduced myself. Because you never know. See what I mean? Because I always like, whenever I see young parents, I always like to, when you are the parents of small children, it's hard. It's hard when you got small kids because small kids are 24-7, 365. You don't get a break. You don't get a break when your children are still small. You do not get a break. Okay? You got to sleep when they sleep or else you ain't going to get no sleep. Okay, obviously, clearly I've been there, so that's what I mean when I say, whenever I see somebody with small children, I'm trying to keep them encouraged, because that's hard. That's hard. Every time they hungry, it's mama. Dad, I'm hungry. Mama, it's you. You got to move, okay? You basically have to live your life around them. So I'm always trying to keep people like that encouraged, because I just wanted to share that there was um, some material I had on the market to try to speak to, to junior high school, because <laughs> they help me look, to try to speak to young adolescent black boys, to let you know that somebody out there understands what it's like to be a young black man, okay? Somebody out there understands what it's like to be a young black man, because that's what I used to be. I used to be a black boy. Now I'm a black man. So that's what I mean when I say I established a new relationship, and, and her words bless me. She blessed me and she spoke something good my way because I did something new. Amen. Thank you, Erica, for that encouragement. Amen. So that's what I mean when I say when God is sending rivers, even if you're still in the wilderness situation, you got to turn that antenna on so you can behold it. I was just having a conversation with a friend of mine about sometimes you have to change your business practices because sometimes you're so focused on doing one thing or doing the thing you're good at or doing things a certain way that you might be missing some of the stuff God is sending towards you. You see what I mean? 
So God might be sending you rivers and you haven't even stepped in the water yet. But God is saying through this prophetic word today that he's sending, that he's making a way in the wilderness and he's sending rivers of water in the desert. Okay? So that means we got to, we got to tune up, antenna up, and pay attention and ask the Holy Spirit, okay, Holy Spirit, where, where, where is the way in the wilderness? Where is the way in the wilderness? Show me the path so I can get out of this wilderness. But while I'm here, you promised me rivers. So where's my water? Because I'm tired of being thirsty. I'm tired of my lips, lips cracking. I'm tired of my throat being parched because if I'm in the wilderness, ain't no water. Ain't nothing but tumbleweeds and cactus in the wilderness. I need a drink of water. <laughs> so Holy Ghost, show me where the water is. And so the Spirit of God has to show you, okay? So that's our prophetic word for today. I want you to be encouraged because this prophetic word is for whoever's going to receive it. So if you're in the body of Christ, if you are in a wilderness situation, ask God to show you the way out. Ask God to show you where are my rivers of water so I can get a drink of water so I can refresh my throat, okay? Now, uh, so I'm going to ask for prayer requests. If you have a prayer request, put it on the screen now so I can pray for you before we close out. Because you know I'm always happy to pray for you. Okay, Spirit of God is telling me I need to, to release a live rhema word, so here we go. For behold, my people, I've spoken through the mouth of my prophet what I'm doing. Yea, even now it is so. So pay attention, wake up, arise, and receive what I am doing in your life. I'm showing you the way out. I'm showing you the pathway, the roadway, and I'm sending you the rivers and the streams if I have pro as I have promised. Because I have no intention for you to stay in that wilderness. I have no intention for you to be without resources. I have no intention for you to have a dry throat and a dry mouth. I have no intention for you to have a hungry belly. But I meant for you to be full and fed. And you will glorify me from your fullness and from the fatness and from the anointing. And you will glorify me from the rivers that I'm sending you. And I'm going to send you so much, it's going to bubble over. And it's going to spill over on other people that they too might be edified and that they too might get to know me. So get ready, says the Spirit of the living God. Now there's a few anointings, okay, in mind we're going to pray for God. There's a few anointings I, I need to release to you right now. And the power of God is going to come through this broadcast for all of you that receive it. There's somebody looking at me, you've got a, uh, some power, uh, problems in your back. Here's what I want you to do. Put your hand on your back if you can reach back there. Put your hand on wherever your back is hurting and say, in the name of Jesus, by his stripes I'm healed. I release the power of God to flow through this broadcast and I target it at your back. In the name of Jesus, I speak the word of God that by, your stri by Jesus' stripes you are healed. Okay, you are already healed by the stripes of Christ. So I'm feeling it as I'm saying it to you. You should feel the healing power of God coming in your back right now. Those of you that need deliverance, some of y'all need deliverance from low self-esteem. Right now, in the name of Jesus, I cast out that low self-esteem demon. There's an unclean spirit in your ear telling you you ain't worthy. There's an unclean spirit in your ear telling you you can't do it. You can't take the promised land because you're too something. Too young, too old, too short, too tall, too educated, too uneducated, too black, too white, too broke, too something. That's the devil. In the name of Jesus, I cast that devil out. That you can't do it, Spirit, because I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. Okay? It's not the size of your problem. It's the size of your God. That's what counts. Okay? You can have a baby if you pass time. You can slay a giant if you're just a shepherd boy. You can lead an army if you're somewhere hiding on the threshing room floor. Okay? You can do it. It's not the size of your problem. It's the size of your God. So I rebuke that low self-esteem devil right now and I cast it off you. You'll feel it break off your head. You'll feel that unclean spirit break off your head. That's the power of God. Casting out demons because demons can't stand up against the blood of Jesus and the name of Jesus. So in the name of Jesus, I cast out that low self-esteem demon been in your ear telling you you can't take the promised land because you're too something. That's the devil. And I cast that out right now in Jesus' name. Uh, those of you that are listening to me that are entrepreneurs, what you need is a fresh vision from God. You need a blueprint. This, uh, once again, once again, I'm living it out. This year, God gave me a new blueprint.
for some of the stuff I'm doing. And I wrote it down. I mean I wrote it down, and I wrote it down in detail because I am now building uh, certain of my businesses according to the pattern of what God is saying. I'm building according to the pattern on the mount. So right now, in the name of Jesus, I release the prophetic vision to you right now to entrepreneurially build that business because God is going to give you a pattern on the mount. You need to scale the mountain of God. What that means is that you need to get alone somewhere with God and spend time with him, just you and him. Ask God to show you the pattern to build your business. And the Lord will show it to, the Lord will show it to you. And when he does, you build your business according to that pattern. So right now I have re released a prophetic vision to you. So when you get a Lord, alone with the Lord, the Lord is going to show you how to build that business, how to try to do that thing that you've been trying to do. Okay? Because it's the power of God that makes a difference. It's the power of God that makes a difference. It's the power of God that makes the difference. Okay? It's not by, my, not by our might, not by our power, but by the Holy Ghost, by the Spirit of God. That's how the Christian life is lived. My pastor preached powerfully on that this morning, and I received it. Okay? So there is power coming through this broadcast right now. So let me pray for Imani. Imani, uh, ask for guidance. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for Imani, because you said that if we acknowledge you in all of our ways, you shall direct our path. So right now, in the name of Jesus, I ask you to give her guidance, to show her the path you would have her on, to reveal to her in no uncertain terms what she's supposed to do next. And for the rest of this year, for 2019, lay it out for her, Lord, so she can see which way she's supposed to go. We thank you for it, and we believe you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, amen and amen. Any more prayer requests, put them on the screen. All right, so for those of you that missed the top of the broadcast, uh, I told you I'm going to start featuring my music on this channel. I'm going to be on TV on Wednesday. Uh, they're going to interview me on a Milwaukee channel for a diary of a smart black kid. If you can't watch that live, I'm going to put it on Facebook. So once I get everything, uh, I'm going to put that on Facebook. If I can't put it on there live, then I'll put the link once I get the interview done. Um, but you should be able to, to watch it on TV, except I don't know if it's going to be local or national. I'll, I'll have to get all that uh, information. Um, but that's going to happen this Wednesday. Um, I'm going to start featuring my music on the channel. These broadcasts are on Facebook Live, Periscope, Twitter, my Twitter, PDT, SOTC, and YouTube. So if you don't catch me live, you can go back to at least four different places and see the broadcast. My Facebook page, Prophet David Taylor. Uh, my Twitter page, PDT, SOTC. My Periscope, Prophet David Taylor. And my YouTube channel, Prophet David Taylor. Look me up through the hashtag PDT. I hashtag PDT, all my stuff online. So that's how you can find it. All right? So God bless you. Uh, Internet's working again. I'm back online. Bless God, because I was off for a while, because there's some stuff going on there. But God gave me the victory. And uh, so uh, moving forward, so I'll be here every Sunday, 2.30 p.m. Central, Central Standard Time to do the prophetic broadcast. And then I'm going uh, to do my No More Genies broadcast on the second Thursday, because I know I have some more to put in there. So we're going to pr uh, pray a closing prayer. We're going to close out. God bless you. Thank you for those of you that have watched me live. Oh, yeah, if you want to support my ministry, um, there's a PayPal link, paypal.me, uh, on my Facebook page. And then also you can donate through Amazon Smile. When you go through the Amazon Smile link, they ask you to choose a charity. Well, my profit, David Taylor Company, is an NFP or not-for-profit, so you can donate uh, to that charity if you want to support my ministry financially. Now, some of the things that I do, if you want to know what I do with my donations, I'm working on a prophetic ministry set up where I can minister to the homeless um, because I want to bring the power of God to people that have kind of gotten off track because don't nobody grow up to be homeless. So I want to bring the power of God to people to help give them a prophetic word and give them something to eat so that they can get back on track. But anybody that needs a prophetic word, I want to be able to do that. And then I want to be able to continue to release my prophetic music. So when you give donations, that's where uh, the money's going. So thank you so much for that. So we're going to pray a closing prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you so much for this day. Thank you so much, oh God, for being a part of your kingdom. For it is truly a privilege and an honor to be used of you. Oh, God, because it's your word and your spirit and your blood and your name that makes the difference. But thank you for using us. Oh, God, thank you for giving us the honor of being used by you, Father. Thank you so much for your kindness and your grace. And I ask that this prophetic word goes out among all the world and blesses all those you would have it blessed. Because it's your word, not mine. And I know it won't return to you void so that people might be encouraged that if they're having a desert experience, that you already setting up the roadway to get them out 
and that you're already sending the rivers and the streams um, and that they need to pay attention so they can get those resources. So I thank you for it, God. I thank you for your prophetic word. Uh, thank you so much. I uh, can't think if I had a thousand tongues, I couldn't thank you enough for your grace and your kindness, for truly you are a good God. Truly you are God all by yourself and there is none beside you. Okay? You have no peer. So we bow down before you, oh God, you and you alone, and we give you the glory that's due your name. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen and amen. God bless you. Again, thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you uh, so much for your online support. Thank you for your financial support. Thank you for your prayer support. I appreciate it all. So I'll be on next week at 2.30. I'll be on TV on Wednesday. Look for my Facebook uh, links so you can check that out for the interviews for a Smart Black Kid. And then I will let you know when I have my music here. I've already got some videos up. I want to get them on iTunes, so I want you to be able to purchase them if you want to get them. You can check out the videos. And uh, so, yeah, so we're moving forward. God is doing some new things in my life. And I'm going to do what I talked about today. I'm going to get my antenna up. And if there's any streams in my life that I'm missing, I want to get in that stream so I also can take advantage of what the Spirit of God is trying to show me. Because remember, I say it every week. Whatever it is I'm telling you, I'm doing it too. Okay? I'm not talking at you. I'm talking with you. Because I'm your fellow brother in Christ on this life journey with you. All right? God bless you. Thank you so much. Have a great rest of your Sunday. Have a great rest of your week. And I will see you next time.